Christian, great to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, you talk about net interest income being lower than 2018. What are we looking at single digit lower? I mean, just put some kind of proportion around that for guidance. Mm. So, I mean, what we basically have said is that before we expect it to be somewhat in the same range, given that we were having, would have volume growth to offset the funding cost, I think what we're seeing is with the, with the kind of Danish rate market being a little bit lower for longer, that we won't get the benefit from that. And also, we're seeing that our funding cost has just significantly increased here in Q1. So, I think it's the funding cost driving it, and it's a little bit of the, the rate markets that's been against us in, in the Danish market specifically. So, we're just guiding a, a lower, not with specific kind of numbers within the a range or so. Um, one of the things that the analysts are looking at is your jaws, in other words, cost to, cost to revenue. Is there an inevitability that you have a negative operating jaws this year? I mean, it, it looks definitely with the, the investments that we're doing in our AML activities to make sure that we are as strong as we can be to fight financial crime, that is going to endure and increase our cost significantly. We also communicated that in our uh, outlook before. And, and with the income pressure that we're seeing in the rates uh, currently in Denmark and with the, in general, uh, tough market conditions that we are having in Norwalk's competition being extremely high, uh, we do see that this might uh, lean into a negative jaw uh, on, on that. Uh, but I think it's the right thing for the future of Danske Bank to actually invest in this area so that we can be fighting financial crime as, as good as possible. What are the consequences? We saw an outflow on the retail side of the business. You told us in February 11,000 retail customers had left. There is natural attrition. I know that might be part of your response. But try and give me a context of the institutional damage on relationships. Have, have you seen any other material changes in counterparty relationships in this quarter? So, so I think it's really important to say we can isolate the impact to our retail customers in Denmark. If we look across the Nordic, all our institutional retail customers in general are past this issue, and we're having good relation, good activity in general with, uh, with our clients. If you look at our retail uh, the first quarter, we, we did see a 0.6% outflow of retail customers, which is higher than we would normally see also with just underflowing, or like underlying attrition. Now, we do see that the, the last couple of uh, weeks of, of the quarter was uh, slowing down with the activities around Estonia and also the news press around Estonia, our Estonia case. So we do see light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the Danish retail customer segment. So in general, it hasn't been that uh, tough. We're actually already in fourth quarter. We got past it, especially with a lot of the institutional investors. Once we explained what we're doing, explained how we're investing to make sure this never happens again and learn from our mistakes, we're able to move on and actually talk business. I've been talking business with a lot of our clients most of the first quarter. Order. But again, we can isolate this to a retail Den Den Denmark kind of uh, area where we have seen reduction in, in customers. Well, let's get to that. Let's get to actually doing business, I suppose, for want of better words. What is your loan growth outlook at for, for this year, Christian? So we're having a loan growth of the quarter, you know, year on year of 3%. I think we in general are going to see growth in our Nordic, uh, the, the Sweden, Norway and fin Finland. And I think in Denmark, we're going to be a little bit more cautious. We're starting to see a little late cycle activity in Denmark, which means that we're being a little bit more stricter on our loan giving in, in the Danish uh, segment. But in Norway and Sweden, we're seeing significant good growth. We're seeing great growth with our partnership agreements. So, so I think in general, we're not guiding necessarily for how much growth, uh, but I I think we, we're seeing very good traction in our kind of Norwegian, Swedish and Finnish portfolio. And in the Danish portfolio, we are seeing a, a little bit more balanced activity on the lending growth side. Um, look, you mentioned negative rates and, and the pressure that that's having. And I think every CFO and CEO are grappling with that. The consequence in Switzerland is, of course, passing those negative rates on to customers. Um, where are you with that? If we are lower for longer on a protractive basis, is there an inevitability, Christian, mm. that that has to happen? So I think we have actually, uh, in Denmark, was one of the first uh, countries that had to live with negative rates. Uh, so we have actually grown used to negative rates in, in, the Danish, uh, in the Danish portfolio, where we are seeing the negative rates. In Sweden, Norway, and, and Finland, we are not having the same kind of uh, negativity, so to speak, in, in our rates. Uh, but we have actually already uh, adjusted our business operating model in Denmark for operating in a negative rate environment. No doubt that when, when and if rates will increase in Denmark, that's going to give us a significant uplift in our profits. 
do you think as you look at the business question, ultimately, I, I'm looking at your stock price, 254, trauma, 130. Are you susceptible to a bid? Have you, have you had any, a, a, any sort of inkling that you are susceptible at the moment to a bid? I think you have to remember that um, that we have a majority shareholder with Maersk, which is a long-term and has been long-term shareholder with us for a very long time, and there's no change in their view of, of long-term ownership with Danske Bank. They see that as a natural uh, ownership of the infrastructure in the Danish uh, society. So. So we, we have not seen any, uh, we don't expect any uh, because of this uh, kind of blocking uh, area. When you look at the landscape across Europe, uh, we've caught up with a number of CFOs and CEOs. Um, the dislocation in the German market, the stoicism, some would say, in, in the Swiss market. When you look at European banking landscape, Christian, what is your, what is your view for 2019? Will we see a monster cross-border deal? How do you look at the world? Well, you know, predicting the future is really, really hard when it comes to, to, to large mergers or, or, or whatnot. I think in general there is a um, scale is important in the future banking, but I think being close to your customers and actually knowing your customers, knowing the society you're part of, and actually being there and, and kind of help prosperity in the society you're part of is even more important now, and ne not necessarily the huge conglomerate uh, banking uh, sectors I've seen. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, as you said, uh, it's anybody's guess. Um. I know. Listen, I love a hypothetical question. I, I think they must have a special school for all CFOs and CEOs to go to, to, to reject those questions. One final one for the bond team. Um, you are seeing any more debt? Is, it, is, that, is that part of the plan, Christian, in terms of bolstering so the financials? I, um, so I think it's really important to understand that we issued a $51 billion uh, a debt here in, in first quarter, which is we are planning about 70 to $90 billion for the year. So we've really front-loaded our, our funding. A lot of this is because of uh, MREL requirements that we need to adhere to here uh, by, uh, by 1st of July. So we're actually very far in our funding plans. We will also issue in, in second quarter. But a lot of the NII headwinds that we saw here in first quarter is due to the fact that we were very early off the block to issue a significant amount of, of MREL uh, eligible uh, funding. So, so we'll definitely uh, we'll stick to our 70 to, to, to 90 billion target uh, and, and I'm pleased that we actually have been able to issue as much as 51 billion up here in the uh, first quarter.